For our final topic in this section on data fetching and mutations, let's take a look at the newly introduced form component in XJS. The form component is built on top of the HTML form element, and it comes with some powerful features that make it perfect for modern web applications. It automatically prefetches learning UI, it handles client-side navigation on form submission, and it provides progressive enhancement out of the box. Let me show you how the component works with an example. In our application, currently we have a home page and a products-db page where we display a list of products. In the home page, we will add a product search feature that will redirect to the products db page to show the list of products filtered by the search query. Let's jump into VS Code and see how to achieve that. First, let's set up our loading state. In the products db folder, create a loading.tsx file. Define a simple React component. Export default function loading that returns a div tag loading products. Next, we will define a search component. Create a new file called search.tsx in the components folder. Export a React component called search. This component will render a form with a search input and a submit button. I will paste the code to save time. So export const search return an HTML form element with action is equal to slash products hyphen db with some styling. And then we have one input element name is equal to query with CSS styling and placeholder search products. We also have a button element of type submit tail in CSS styling and the text submit. A very straightforward form with input and button elements. We will, however, make use of the new form component instead of the form HTML element. So import form from next slash form and invoke the form component. Now that we have our search component ready, let's add it to our home page. The root page.tsx file in the app folder will be the entry point for our search functionality. Import the search component from at components slash search and right after the main HTML element and before the image component, invoke search. If you check the browser, you will see that the search input and submit button are rendered. If you type a search query and hit submit, you will be navigated to the slash products DB page and the loading state will briefly appear before the products are rendered. The list of products, however, is not filtered. For our search to work, we need to update our data fetching logic based on the search query. So back in VS Code, in Prisma DB.ts, let's modify the get products function to handle search queries. Accept query, which is optional of type string. And then, if query exists, we're going to return prisma.product.findMany, and we're going to specify a condition where or title contains query, description contains query. In other words, if a query parameter exists, find all products whose title contains that search query or description contains the search query. If the query doesn't exist, return the full list of products. Finally, we need to update our products db page.tsx to handle the search parameter. So the page component now has props and we destructure search params of type promise object. It's going to contain query, which is optional and of type string. Within the function body, we destructure query from search params and pass query as an argument to get products. Back in the browser, when you type product three in the search input and hit submit, you will be navigated to the slash products DB page and the products will be filtered based on the search query. We just see the one product that contains product three in the title or the description. Now this might not seem anything special, but Next.js is actually doing a ton of work behind the scenes. First, when the form component becomes visible, it prefetches the loading UI associated with slash products DB route. This is the value of the action prop. 
Second, when a user submits the search, it instantly navigates to the products page client side and the form data gets turned into URL patterns. For example, question mark query is equal to product three. Third, it will show the loading state while the search results are being fetched. We see our loading div tag while the products are being fetched in the background. Finally, once the data is ready, the results are displayed in the UI. A lot of functionality is happening here. Now, the form component also supports progressive enhancement out of the box. This means that even without JavaScript, the form will still work as a regular HTML form. The form component gives us a really smooth user experience with minimal effort on our part. It handles all the complex parts of form submission, navigation, and loading states, letting us focus on building features rather than dealing with messy code like prevent default, manual state management, or any of that old school form handling stuff. And you should know that the form component also supports server actions. In our product details page, product details component rather, we have a form that allows us to delete a product. Let's replace the HTML form element with the form component. So import form from next slash form and replace the HTML element with the form component. Head back to the browser and delete a product. It continues to work as expected. To summarize, the form component is a new component in Xs that extends the HTML form element and provides a lot of powerful features like prefetching loading UI, client-side navigation on form submission, and progressive enhancement out of the box. With that, we complete this third section on data fetching and mutations. We learn how to fetch data in client components, how to fetch data in server components with async await, handle loading and error states with loading.tsx and error.tsx, and about fetching data directly from a database. We also learned about server actions for data mutations, validation and pending state feedback with use form status and use action state hooks, separating server actions for use in client components, how to pass additional data to perform update and delete operations, how to perform optimistic updates, and finally, how to handle forms with the new form component. You should now have a solid understanding of fetching data and handling forms in Next.js. Supporting the channel is free. Please like and subscribe. It helps a lot.